Our next guest manages one of the best performing public pensions in the United States, the Tampa Fire and Police Pension. Let's get his picks on the market. Uh, Jay Bowen, president, CEO, CIO, Bowen Haynes Company, joins us now. There's a lot to talk about, especially after Warren Buffett last week went after public pensions. But we want to get your take because you are very successful. It was $2.7 billion under management for just the Tampa and Tampa is about $2.1 billion. $2.1 right. billion. Right. As you look at the markets right now, because so much of what you're doing for those firefighters and the, that pension is equity-based, what do you think is happening with these markets, especially since you have to plan long-term on behalf of those clients? We do, and because these plans are basically in perpetuity, so it's a very long-term approach from an actuarial standpoint. We, we have the luxury of taking a 20-year investment approach. The board down there has realized, and we're in our 44th year as the sole manager. Uh, my father forged a relationship in 1974, and so we're in the midst of our 44th year. So they realize the benefits of taking a long-term approach. They've seen it in the data. Every year we're able to present them with a different set of 20-year rolling data. We can now show 25 separate 20-year rolling data points to show really solid performance. So we're very lucky and very fortunate to be able to take a long-term approach. So, so if we're taking a long-term approach, there, we have had a lot of debate about where we are in the economic cycle, right? So if you're taking that long view, where do you think we are? There's been a lot of um, talk about a recession coming in the next several years, potentially. Right. You know, I think this is a very, this is a fascinating period right now, and I think we narrowly averted a major deflationary monetary blunder. When you listen to Powell, the interview on October 4th, the autopilot, the nowhere near neutral, and then the December press conference, um, the 180 flip from then to the January 5th symposium in Atlanta was just remarkable, thank goodness because now I think they're on the sidelines for, for good reason, because inflation is just not an issue. Mm. And what I want to emphasize is how powerful that is to the equity markets when inflation is not an issue. If you look at data going all the way back to 1948 and you look at long periods where inflation was benign, the equity markets have done far better. In fact, this bull market, current bull market, believe it or not, it's 10 years old now, compounded at close to 17%. Inflation has been nowhere. And our outlook going forward is it has kind of a mid-1990s feel to me where we could have trend growth or above trend growth, um, benign inflation, uh, a strong dollar uh, or a stable dollar, and a potentially a burst of productivity growth from capital spending, which yeah. is a great backdrop for stocks. So, so, so what percentage of the pension is in equities? What percentage is fixed income? Right. It's, um, we can go by the uh, charter, we're allowed to go 65% in stocks on a cost basis. Mm -hmm. um, the balance is in high quality fixed income instruments. And we've always run it using the equity side for capital appreciation for long-term growth and the bond side for income instability. It's okay. a timing strategy based on interest rate anticipation. And can you talk about how it's changed? So if you think about in a world we live in where things change on a tweet, and I say that as a joke, but also somewhat seriously, where the world and the brands and the, the companies have just, the evolution that happens is, I mean, we've never worked with this rapidity before. So when you think about what's gonna be around in 20 years, how has that changed in the last five? Yeah, it's, um, there's never a dull moment, that's for sure. And I think we're big believers in this fourth industrial revolution. Uh, a continuation and a strengthen of this, strengthening of this fourth industrial revolution, which touches a lot of technology themes, which are, which are we view as kind of more creative destruction, um, pr uh, good for productivity. And you know, in the, while I say it has kind of a mid 1990s feel, back then it was uh, computer hardware and software and semiconductor chips, and we had this burst. It's so hard to predict when these productivity bursts are going to come, but. We had it over 3% the latter part of the decade, which is so good for, for wage growth and, and real income growth and economic growth. I think that could be duplicated in more of the, 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 the 4G areas, like, like uh, the, the, excuse me, the fourth industrial revolution areas, and I'm talking about areas like um, 5G, that, that infrastructure build out, where stocks like Corning and Nokia and Cisco are benefiting. Industrial automation, where stocks like Honeywell and Rockwell and Emerson Electric are benefiting. You got blockchain, um, you got artificial intelligence, you got robotics, mm -hmm. um, you get nanotechnology, all of these areas which are so important but could really lead, I think, to a burst in productivity, which has been lacking. The data I looked at, right. go back to 2010, it's the longest period we've had with productivity growth has come in below uh, 2%. Yeah, so and that's something that's been confounding. You're just starting to see inklings of it. I mean, the report today, the, the, 
the, with the GDP, um, I, I, I gleaned a couple of important things for that. Number one, inflation is still nowhere near. I mean, one point, core PCE is 1.7%. Right. So I feel like in my lifetime they hadn't hit their target, which is very powerful. Um, in fact, um, more than anything, I think several board members continue to be worried about this deflationary situation. Huh. So, Jay, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming in. It's really great to see you as always. Jay Bowen.